بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Fasting is a shield, and the reward of the person who fasts is عظيم, is great. And fasting it takes guarding one's tongue, and it takes it requires guarding one's eyes and gaze, and guarding one's private parts, and staying away from those things which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has prohibited. And as was reported by Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam saying Al-Sumu Junnutun ma lam yakhriqha In this hadith was narrated in Nisa'i. And in this hadith narration the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi said Fasting is a shield. As long as he, the slave, does not pierce it. And this hadith is Hassan. Sheikh Abdul Qadr al Arnut said, related to the meaning of piercing the fasting, he says, as long as he does not pierce it, means by backbiting. So that shows us that we can pierce our own shield, we weaken our shield of fasting, the, the good that fasting protects you from the fire and it protects you from those evil sins as well. But we pierce that shield, that shield of protection, when we engage in unlawful things. And as the Shaykh mentioned, that backbiting is one of those things that will pierce our shield. And we know backbiting in the Mima, spreading tales about others, is one of the major sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and forgive us for our many faults and the many times we've, uh, we've fall, fallen into this evil and wicked sin. As was narrated in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I believe, or it was Ibn Abbas, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَرَّ عَلَى ما يعذبان في كبير أما أهلهما فكان لا يستتروا من البو وَأَمَّا آخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة so the Prophet ﷺ was walking by some graves. And he said, Verily, they are being punished. And they're not being punished for something that is great. Meaning that the people would consider a big deal. And he said, As for one of them, that they used to spread tales about others. You know, they used to slander and, and backbite others. And as for the other one, they used to not clean themselves properly when they were making a stinja, that they were not cleaning their private parts, or that they were splashing urine on their clothing when they uh, were using the bathroom. And the purpose, the point mentioning here, is the sin, the major sin of backbiting or slandering, that we have to be cautious and caution ourselves and caution our families and caution our friends and, and, and our companions to watch our tongue, remind one another, in order to keep, and especially when we're fasting. To, so remind each other, remember when you're fasting, to remind your brothers and sisters to watch their tongue. And in another hadith that was narrated uh, on Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, As-siyamu jinnatun min an-nar, fa man asbaha sa'imin, fa la yajhal yawma idhin. وَإِن نِمْرُؤٌ جَهِلَ عَلَيْهِ فَلَا يَشْتَمُهُ وَلَا يُسُبُّهُ وَلَيَقُولُ إِنِّي سَائِمٌ وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِي لَخُلُوفُ فِمْ الصَّائِمِ أَتْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيَ الْمِسْكِ مِنْ رِيَ الْمِسْكِ In this hadith narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fasting is a shield from the fire. So if anyone wakes up in the morning and he is fasting, he should not behave ignorantly. And if anyone behaves ignorantly towards him, he should not malign him or slander him. Instead he should say, I am fasting. By him in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the fragrance from the mouth of the fasting person is sweeter to Allah than the scent of misk, or the scent of musk. In this hadith, it is self-explanatory, but just pointing out, or emphasizing some of the fawaid that we get just from the left of the hadith, just from the nas itself, 
from the text itself, we see that we should be on our best behavior when we're fasting. That even when one, somebody approaches us with ignorant behavior, they're cursing us. They want to draw us into conflict. They want to fight us. They want us to curse them. That we should do our best to restrain and say, Verily, I am fasting. That's how we, re- we, we deal with the shaitan. That's how we deal with those people who want to spoil our fasting. And also we derive from this hadith is that the, although the smell of the fasting person's breath to us and to, our, to others that we deal with may be repulsive or it may be something disliked. But to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you've done this act of ibadah مُقَارَبٍ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Trying to draw nearer to Allah that this smell is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of misk, of musk. And musk is considered one of the most beautiful perfumes and, 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 and a very expensive perfume. And so it shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the fasting person if they do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, avoiding the evil things and avoiding backbiting and doing fasting in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who fast this holy month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.